All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God for your presence this morning. We're grateful for the opportunity to come and to share with one another on this first day of May 2024. Um, again, we're grateful for each and every one of you that press your way uh, this morning and every morning that you uh, join us for our prayer and devotion call. Um, I want to call your attention to Second Chronicles, Check Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. This is what it says. Oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If I had to tag a title to this text, it would be what to do when you don't know what to do. The main character of our story this morning is a brother by the name of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was one of the good kings of Judah. So the Bible says that the Lord was with Jehoshaphat. In fact, the record is that God took care of him, and for 25 years he reigned in Judah as a very able ruler and faithful worshiper of God. The the story says that Jehoshaphat, had a heart that was encouraged in the Lord. And so he set out to do the things that please God. And because of all that he did for the Lord, Jehoshaphat experienced great success. He was doing well in the sight of God. He was doing all things according to what God had desired for him to do. He sought the will of God and the way of God. And then in the first verse of the 20th chapter of the book of Second Chronicles, The Bible says a peculiar thing. It says, after this, after all that he had done right and after all that God had done for him, it says, after this. After this, the children of Moab, the children of Amon, and others came against Jehoshaphat to battle. And according to the text, The word got to Jehoshaphat that a great multitude was coming up against uh, them from beyond the sea, and now he's put in a position where he simply does not know what to do. I wonder if there's anybody on the line this morning that has ever had that kind of testimony. Everything seems to be going well, and all at once, everything seems to go wrong. All seem to be going good, but then something happened to turn things upside down. And when things like that happen, it has the tendency to render us feeling like we just don't know what to do. And I've got to be honest with you this morning. Um, I may be saved, but there are times when things happen to me in my life that have me afraid and make me feel like I don't know what to do. I'm not too holy to tell you the truth. There are some times I'm afraid, and I know what the word of God says. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I know all of that, but sometimes in our humanity, we're afraid. I know that God has not brought us this far to leave us now, but sometimes we're afraid, and we just don't know what to do. And I can appreciate the honesty of Jehoshaphat, who said that he's afraid. He was the king. He followed God. He served the Lord with his whole heart, but he was afraid because there are just some things in this life that we will encounter that can cause us to be afraid. And here's the encouraging part because it's all right to be afraid if we have the right response to our fear. You see, when we're afraid, we have the tendency to revert to what we used to do. We have the tendency to go back to the way we used to handle things. We go back to our old coping mechanisms, and instead of gaining clarity on our situation, we often end up making things worse. So Jehoshaphat admits his fear, but I'm encouraged about how he responds to that fear. The Bible says that when Jehoshaphat gets afraid, that he seeks the Lord for help. 
my sisters and brothers, when we are afraid and we just don't know what to do, the first thing we need to do is to seek God for help. You see, it's all right to be afraid if when we're afraid we seek guidance from God. That's what Jehoshaphat does in verses 6 through 12. He prays to the Lord for direction on the matter at hand. He says in verse 6, Lord God of our fathers. Stop right there. Don't miss that blessing housed in the introduction to the prayer. Jehoshaphat begins his prayer by acknowledging the God of his fathers. And sometimes in our fear and sometimes in not knowing what to do, we have the tendency to forget that God is the God of our forefathers. Now, that may not mean much to you, but when I think about it, it means a whole lot to me because what that says to me is that because he's the God of our foreparents, then that suggests that I am not the first person to ever seek God. And if I'm not the first person to ever seek God, then I can lean on God's past performance. That was a good reason to shout right there. You see, sometimes we forget that we're not the first people that ever had to deal with whatever issues we may be dealing with. I'm not the first person to have lost a loved one. I'm not the first to have lost my job. I'm not the first to be dealing with a sickness. I'm not the first to have to go through depression. I'm not the first to be stuck between a rock and the hard place. And if others who have come before me by the grace of God were able to endure, able to persevere, able to make it through, then that means that I, too, can be more than a conqueror. Sometimes when we don't know what to do, we need to be reminded of how God has performed in the past. Was it not the God? Was this not the God who created the world out of nothing? Is this not the same God of heaven who rules over the earth? Is this not the God of Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of Moses and David, the God of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, uh, the God of Peter, James, and John, the God of Paul and Jesus that made ways for them and is able to make ways for us? Maybe that's too far in the past for some of us. Is this not the God of our ancestors? the one who brought us over the middle passage, the one that brought us through the grips of chattel slavery, the one who brought us beyond the Jim Crow South, the one who brought us through segregation and civil rights. Maybe that's too far in the past for some of us. Is this not the God that Grandmama sung about when she sang that the Lord will make a way somehow? When beneath the cross you bow, He'll take away each sorrow. Let him have your burdens now. When the load bears down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow. There's sweet relief in knowing that the Lord will make a way somehow. When she's saying, I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me now. Maybe that's too far in the past for some of us. Is this not the same God that made ways out of no ways for you and for me? He's a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in the darkness. He woke us up this morning, started us on our way. He picks us up when we're down, gives us joy for our sadness, Uh, lifts our bow down head, brings comfort in the midst of calamity, grants grace even while we're grieving. For every mountain he's brought us over, for every trial he's seen us through, for every blessing, hallelujah, for this we give God praise. God has made ways for others in the past and made a way for each and every one of us. Same God right now same God back then. We need to seek God for help. Jehoshaphat goes on in verse 12 as he closes his prayer and says, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. My sisters and brothers on the line this morning, when we are afraid and we just don't know what to do, the first thing we need to do is seek God for help. 
But then the second thing we need to do is to steady our eyes on our God. We can't look to man because they'll let us down every time. We've got to keep our eyes on God. We can't look to other folks, to our family, to our friends, but we need to steady our eyes on God. You see, the problem with us is that we have peripheral vision. And while we need to stay focused on God, we allow everything else that's going on around us to take our focus away from where it needs to be. But I stopped by this morning to share with all that gather for this devotion and prayer call that when we don't know what to do, we need to make sure we steady our eyes on God in everything that we deal with. Make sure we keep our eyes on God. I know it's tempting to look to the left and to the right. It's tempting, but we got to keep our eyes on God. I know it's tempting to look at our resources and our provisions, but we need to keep our eyes on God. I know it's easy to look at how big our problem is, but when our eyes are steady on God, We can see how big our God is, and our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing our God cannot do. I know it gets difficult at times not to focus on our opposition, but even when we look to the hills, remember that our help doesn't come from the hills. Our help comes from the God of our salvation, so we need to steady our eyes on God. Paul said it this way, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to steady our our eyes on God because God sees what we can. God knows what we don't. And God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think. When we don't know what to do, not only do we need to seek God for help, and steady our eyes on God. But lastly, we need to stand still until we hear from God. The Bible says in verse 13 that all of Judah, their little ones, their wives, their children, stood before the Lord, and they stayed there until they heard from God. Oh, my sisters and brothers, don't take a step until God orders our steps. Don't make a move until God tells us to move. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen our hearts. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. They stood there and didn't move until God spoke. You see, our problem is that many of us want to move and then hear God after we have moved. We want to move and then get God's confirmation that our move was all right to do. But the text says that we must learn how to stand still sometimes and just wait until we hear from God. We don't need another political uprising. We don't need another conqueror on the scene. What we need is a special word that will bond within our hearts and give us direction from above. We need a word from the Lord, a word from the Lord. Just one word from the Lord will move all doubts and cause the sun to shine and give us peace of mind. So speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak now. And I wonder... If there's anybody on the prayer call who will stand still until God's will is clear. I I know we get tired of waiting sometimes, but he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not think. God is simply saying, don't make a move until I tell you to. And when I tell you to move, then you move. Just like that. I'm closing 
when I tell you that they stood still until God spoke. And when God spoke, listen to what God said. God said, be not afraid. In other words, King Jehoshaphat, it was your fear of the situation that drove you to God in the first place. But don't let that same fear drive you away from God. Be not afraid. That's a word for somebody today. When we take whatever we're going through to the Lord in prayer, make sure we leave it there. Be not afraid. Be not afraid, for our God is with us, and our God is for us, and our God will protect us. But after he says, be not afraid, then he says, don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged by the multitude. Don't be discouraged by what you're going through. Don't be discouraged by the obstacle, the problem, the situation, the circumstance. I know what is before you seems overwhelming. I know what you see seems to be too much to bear. But that's why I told you don't look around. Look at me because I am that I am. I'm everything that you'll ever need me to be at any moment that you need me to be for every purpose that you need me to be. Be not afraid. Don't be dismayed. And lastly, he says, for the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So tomorrow, go down against them, for you will not need to fight this battle. In other words, the fight has already been fixed. And you won't even need to fight because God will fight for you. And I'm so glad that the Lord of Lords still fights our battles. Is there anybody that knows that the Lord still fights our battles? Uh, that, That battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Songwriter said there is no pain. Jesus can't feel. There is no hurt that he cannot heal. All things work according to the master purpose and his holy will. No matter what you're going through, remember that God is using you, for the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. That's what happened at Calvary. The wages of sin was death. The wages had to be paid for, but because we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, we would have been fighting a losing battle. But God loved us so much that he told us this battle was not yours. It was the Lord's, and God sent his son, and they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy our pardon, and an empty grave is there to prove our Savior lives. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Um, Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth living just because he lives. What to do when you don't know what to do? Here it is. Seek God for help. Steady our eyes on God and stand still until we hear from God. For the battle is not ours. It belongs to God. God, we're grateful and we thank you for this day. We thank you for another day's journey that you have brought us, a day that we've never seen before and a day when it's over, we'll never see it again. But while we're here during this day, we want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for how you kept us. Thank you for how you direct us. Thank you for how you lead and guide us. Thank you for how you love us. Thank you for how you forgive us. Thank you for how you take care of us. Thank you for reminding us that this battle is not ours. It's yours. So, God, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, because you have been so good to us that if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't tell it all. But, Lord, we do want to say thank you. Before we go any further, Lord, please forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of anything that's not like you, anything that was contrary to your will. God, we pray that even now that you will uh, forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for how you continue to do what you do in our lives. And, Lord, you know all about what's going on. You know about what's going on in our personal lives. You know uh, the situations that we're dealing with. You know the problems that we're faced with. You know, God, all of the circumstances that we have to battle with. So, God, I thank you that we can seek you for help 
I thank you that we can keep our eyes on you. I thank you that we can stand still until we hear from you and know that we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be dismayed, because these battles that we're feeling, these battles that we're dealing with uh, don't belong to us. You'll fight our battles for us. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. So, God, for every personal issue that someone on the line is dealing with, God, I pray that you touch them now from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and remind them to keep their eyes on you. Remind them to steady their eyes on you. Remind them, God, to seek you, God, even when they don't know what to do, so that you can remind us that we don't have to be afraid but that all things are working together for our good, to them that love us, to them who are called according to your purpose. Thank you, God, for what you have done. Thank you, God, for what you continue to do. Lord, you know all that's going on in this world of ours. God, you know what's going on over there in the Ukraine and with Russia. God, you know everything that's going on with Israel and Palestine. God, you know everything that's going on down there in Charlotte and over there in New York, God. You, you know everything that's going on uh, even in our local settings. And, God, there's nothing that escapes your purview. There, there's nothing, God, that, that goes unnoticed by you. And so, God, we pray even now that we would be reminded to continue to seek you for guidance, continue to look to you for guidance how we should deal with these issues, how we should confront these things, how we should uh, handle what's going on, God. Seek your guidance so that you can give us everything that we need, everything that we need to know, everything that we need to do in order to fight these battles, Uh, God. And then we need to realize that when we don't know what to do, you always know what to do, and we can seek your guidance in what needs to be done. So, God, we say thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. And, God, continue to lead, guide, and direct us, not some of the way, but continue to lead, guide, and direct us all the way. And we will give you glory, and we will lift you up, and we will magnify you, and we will glorify you, and we will exalt you, God, and extol you, for you alone are worthy of all the praise. God, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. God, in any way you bless us, we'll give you glory. We'll give you honor. And we will do all that we do for you and in your name. Again, Lord, I pray for each and every person on the line. I pray as we move forward in this day that you will bless their going out, bless their coming in, God. Please, Lord, keep a hedge of protection around them in the mighty name of Jesus. God, again, we thank you for all that has been said and done. And God, help us to remember to seek you for help. Steady our eyes on you. Stand still until you tell us to move, for you'll let us know, God, that the battle is not ours. It's yours. This is our prayer. We pray it now in Jesus' name. Let everyone in agreement with the prayer. Amen. 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 Amen.